Welcome back to the MDTV headquarters. My first DIY video of the year. In this episode, I'm gonna be installing some aftermarket headlights for the WRX. I bought them off of eBay. They're probably the cheapest aftermarket headlights you can buy. Let's see if they're actually worth it. You'll probably see down this way, the brand of the headlights. I've been eyeing these out for a long time. Uh, I think I discovered these when I first bought the car in 2020. And the reason why I didn't buy them is because I quite like the stock headlights on this car. In Australia, all true models of the WRX and SCI get the same premium headlights. I know it's different in the States. I think the base model over there gets a different headlights. But in Australia, all models, base, premium, SCI, spec car, whatever, they all get the same headlights. Now these only fit for the pre-facelift model, 15 to 2017, because in the facelifted model in Australia, they've got different headlights with different harnesses. So this one's not gonna work but the headlights in the facelift models are far superior to any aftermarket headlights anyway, so I wouldn't be changing that. These, I actually quite like, they're pretty cool. I don't know if I really need or want to upgrade to this one. I just saw off of eBay, thought it was cheap, and thought it'd be a good idea to make a video on this and see if it's worth it. I've only seen these on maybe two other WRXs driving around. They're very affordable, readily available, and very easy to find. But before we put this on, let me show you around the stock headlights, because they're not actually stock. I've actually already done some work to them. So you've got the LED bulb, there it comes with the high beam that's a yellow bulb disgusting shit and it comes with the c light but the stock c light isn't that bright so i've actually upgraded the c light to some leds in there i bought a pair of led c lights off of aliexpress i think they costed me about 50 to 80 bucks i can't remember i opened the headlights and i wired it myself and it works pretty well let me turn it on they're much brighter then the stock ones, they look pretty cool, I reckon. I think I did a really good job. Low beam headlights on. I don't quite like the bit over there, that reflector, that's just a reflector. So that's the high beam and the indicators that I've wired up. As you can see, the high beam is a yellow bulb, orange bulb, which is disgusting. I really don't like it and haven't been bothered changing it. I know it's cheaper than changing a whole headlight, but yeah, I just haven't been bothered changing it. I, I reckon the lights look pretty cool and I quite like these headlights, so I might regret changing it actually. And another reason why I really like the stock headlights is because the shape of the headlights here, it's nice and rounded, it's nicely shaped. It just curves, right? It curves really nicely and it's very smooth. And a lot of the aftermarket headlights aren't actually that smooth. They're very blocky, right? It's very, it's like a square on the side. And, and I've heard a lot of people online that have installed those aftermarket headlights. They've had water pull on top of the headlights because it's just so flat. This one's not as bad. It's quite blocky. It's not as bad, but let's see. These V-Land headlights are very well packaged, actually. They come in a foam box and these are held in place, you know, pretty tightly. It does come with a plug and play harness, which is brilliant. I wanna show you how to do this because it's very, very easy. Everything's completely plug and play. So I've gone with these headlights here. You can't actually see them very well because of the reflection. They don't actually have a single LED globe. All the LEDs are up the top there. There's a whole bit of reflectors beaming it out. You can't really see it well here, but you'll see it in due time. Anyway, there are probably many tutorials on YouTube on how to take off your front bumper. So I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. The first thing you gotta do is take off these clips for air intake so you can get to the headlight. This, leave that over there. Then you've got 10 mil clip, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, clip, 10 mil. Take off these clips here. Before I do anything else, actually, I want to see if they actually work. So I want to take off this plug and pl just plug it into the aftermarket headlight, see if it turns on. These do feel very light, so I am questioning the quality of it. All right, let's turn on the car. Hey, looks pretty cool. Gives you a better idea of those new headlights. Oh, there's another one. One more. So I don't think there's anything underneath. Just comes out like that. 
All right, so this is part of your plug and play module. This goes into your indicator. So this one goes, I'm pretty sure that one would go here. So you'd have to, oh, far out. I hate these plugs, take forever to undo. Oh, there we go. All right, so that goes into there. Or is it that way? Yep, just like that. That goes back into there. Your headlight connects to this light. This is your daytime running light. It is already a fuse on it. Well, two fuses with a fuse tap. So this goes to your fuse box and this will go to your headlight as well. But we'll put on the headlight first and then deal with that after. Oh, what is this? What's happening? Alignment issues? My air box is in the way though. Hmm. Oh, it's raining a lot more. Gotta hurry up. It's raining pretty bad. Switched over to my phone to show you, but this is absolutely terrible. The headlight is clashing or colliding with the airbox, the stock airbox. On the right side, even that is touching, it's pushing it, and that's after me moving it. So if you have a look over there, let me zoom in, where the bolt is, that's where the hole was supposed to be. That bolt is bolted into the chassis and that holds the airbox in. But I had to take it out and relocate the mount for the airbox from there to there. And then I just clamped it down with the bolt. So I had to move the airbox, tilt it that way, to move it out of the way of this section that was colliding with the headlights. Can't believe it. That's that's actually pretty bad. It started freaking raining. I had to turn off my camera so it doesn't get wet and putting it back together is a complete opposite of how you took it apart. It's very easy. I wanna show you how to wire the daytime running lights. It's pretty easy too. So it comes with a plug and play harness for your daytime running lights. It's shorter on one end. So that goes to the passenger side in Australia or if you're in the States, that's the driver's side. So the shorter end goes here because it's closest to the fuse box and closest to the battery. All you gotta do is plug that in like that. The wire goes to the other side and you plug that into the other harness on the other headlight. Then make sure you tuck it away nicely, keep it away from all the hot bits of the car. And then the main wire can go over to the fuse box and I'll show you that as well. It comes with a fuse tap in the book it tells you to plug it into that fuse there, which is your low beam. But if you plug it into the low beam fuse, it doesn't run during the day, right? It doesn't run all the time. So here's another trick. I, I don't know why this works. I, I really don't know why it works, but what you're gonna do with your fuse tap, so you're gonna want to chop off one end, use some pliers or just bend it off. And there is a vertical one going down that way. So there are two and they go up and down that way. And there are another two that go up and down that way. You're gonna use the one on the left over on this side. I don't know why it works, but it does. So you just put it in, make sure you've got your fuse in the second slot there and you just plug it in like there. Just plug it in like that. Again, I don't know why it works, but that's been my setup for my custom sea lights for the last three, four years. And it hasn't caused me a problem. What I've done here, this is for my daytime running lights in my fog lights. I've got another wire for the new headlights. What I want to do is put it on here. Okay, you probably don't have this issue, but I do. Make sure that's in and then close your fuse box. So this is what it looks like with its daytime running light. Change the exposure. This is more what you would see during the daytime. I don't like that with the LEDs. You can see the beads and it's not continuous. I wish the whole line of LEDs were continuous and it didn't look like individual LEDs. It's kind of beady and segmented into different parts. That's what your low beam light would look like in the dark. It looks pretty cool. Very bright at night. And I'll turn on the high beam. Extremely bright. So much better than the stock high beams. I know with the stock high beams, you could probably just change it out, but this is pretty cool. So much brighter at night. And that's it. Right, these work really well. So one thing to note with this is that there actually aren't any bulbs. All of these things here, they're all reflectors. And the LEDs are all at the top, lined within the housing. Those white things there, that's an LED, that's an LED, that's an LED, that's an LED. And they all get reflected. I'll put up a comparison photo between old and new to show you just how bright it is when it's bounced off my driveway door. What do I not like? 
well for one they're very angular very boxy i'd like for it to be completely smooth but you know very sharp angles here down there as well so if you have a look at from here that looks fine from this angle you can see it popping out even more and it just doesn't flow really don't like that look but even worse this is probably the worst bit it is that freaking gap it is not a perfect fit there's a huge gap right there and my gosh you know almost i can almost fit my finger in there giant gap underneath here it's pretty smooth but my god up there that is a terrible gap and it's the same on both sides other than that it looks pretty cool even when the car's off that's it guys what do you think i reckon it looks pretty cool i reckon it looks really nice despite the shortcomings and for 400 bucks i reckon it's quite worth it i'll put the link to this exact product in the description box below i'm not sponsored by the way i just think these are pretty cool thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next episode